This right here is the KSO Show, your home for K-State coverage. Stay current on what's happening in the wildcat world of sports. By the end, you might want to tell your friends about us. Or not. But hey, you should. Let's get it. It's a Selection Sunday edition of the KSO Show on K-State Online. Also being broadcast live on John Kurt's Twitter account. Uh, appreciate him doing that. Grant Flanders here. John Kurtz, of course, from K-Man. We're here to talk about K-State making the NCAA tournament as a number four seed in the South region to look at the draw, to look at the opponents, to talk about everything. Uh, we're going to answer some questions that we see from you guys pop up on Kurtz's Twitter feed. Um, and I imagine some of those people are also subscribers to the site, so it should go pretty well. Obvious question first. It's a loaded question. We'll get much deeper into it. I'm going to start with you, Mr. Kurtz. Is you saw the bracket initial reaction. So what did you first feel about it? And then taking some time to step back, look at it, learn a little bit about it. How do you feel about it at this point? It's a good question. I would say when I first saw it, uh, Wisconsin is the thing that stands out because not not only has K-State played them twice in the tournament, they ended the careers of Bill Walker, Michael Beasley, and then Jacob Pullen right. uh, and Curtis Kelly. I love that guy. But uh, outside of that, there was another year in the 2013, actually, where it was – eerily similar wisconsin was set up in the pod as a five when k-state was the four when they won the big 12 co-champs of the regular season now that game didn't play out it was a 12-13 matchup that that game wound up being but a little annoyed to see wisconsin there just because i do still have some ptsd uh uc irvine honestly my first thought was just i mean seems fine right i don't you know i don't know anything about them i didn't even remember that k-state played them in the non-con last year um now after taking some time to look at it like I I think Wisconsin if it got there is a fine matchup I mean uh, Oregon might honestly be the bigger concern like Oregon's playing some pretty good basketball Um, but that's uh, K-State's also been in the same pod with Dana Altman before and not gotten there and then UC Irvine I have more respect certainly for UC Irvine after seeing their resume they've won 16 straight games they've won 30 games overall they have beaten Texas A&M this year so that is something K-State failed to do that uh, so I have some respect, but I'm not over the top scared thinking, hey, this is going to be the upset of the tournament. Um, that's basically where I'm at with this. I think it is a fine, fine draw. I was personally excited about it. Uh, you and I when we were sitting, had, had a talk about Wisconsin right away, and I get it. I mean, I saw the name too, and my first response was, was somewhat similar to where, man, the Badgers, again, they've caused so many problems for K-State in the tournament. But for me, it was brief, you know, and I said to you before we started recording, None of these guys in this team, you know, Barry Brown, Cam Stokes, Dean Wade, any have were on any of those teams that lost to Wisconsin. They'll probably get told about it or hear about it, but they don't have the same fears that longtime K-State fans do. Um, Barry Brown probably wasn't watching K-State with extreme interest back <laughs> yeah. when Michael Beasley lost to those guys or even when Jacob Poland did. So uh, if they get Wisconsin and they lose to Wisconsin, it's not going to be, in my opinion, because it says Wisconsin on their jersey. It'll be because they got outplayed that game. But but I love it. I mean, I love the bracket looking at it. As a four seed, you're not close to home. That's the only thing that bugs me. I would have loved to have seen K-State have a chance to be in Kansas City for the regional final. But at the same time, as we'll get to that point, too. I kind of get why they're not. It doesn't really bother me as much as it does some. Um, I don't fully agree with it, but I, I can understand it. Looking at Irvine, 30-5 and five is a heck of a record. They won 16 straight. That's fantastic. You know, they scored 92 in their last game in, the, in their conference finals, and I believe in the Big West. They had 110 in a game a little bit earlier. They're going to be a good basketball team. And just because K-State beat them last year doesn't mean it's going to happen this year. But we also can't be so naive to say that a team that K-State beat by 22 a year ago when both teams bring everyone back all of a sudden now should be terrifying for you. They can beat you because this is a tournament and they've won 30 games, but I like the draw. You know, looking at their season results, they did win at A&M, which K-State didn't do. And of course, that's going to jump out to a lot of people and, and, it, and it matters. But I think it was the second game of the season. They they dropped five games to teams, you know, ranked significantly lower than K-State. I think all five of their losses were to teams ranked lower than K-State and Ken Palm. They haven't played a team higher than 170 in Ken Palm since December. So this is going to be a, a shock for them. If you're about UC Irvine, again, their experience, their experience as K-State, at least, you know, they don't, not the tournament experience, but the game experience, they're about the same as that. They've got some great numbers from efficiency, defense, and the twos and rebounding. So it's not going to be easy, but I'm with you. I think it's as good of a draw as you could have gotten realistically. Much better to me than seeing, you know, Murray State as a 12 or right. Ohio State as an 11 or 12 or whoever. I think it's a relatively good draw for K-State. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, I know people immediately saw Seth Davis and some of those guys. I think Clark Kellogg also yeah. picked – 
UC Irvine to the Sweet 16, not just to BK State. Right. I mean, look, guys, you're in the NCAA tournament. If you're not a one or a two seed, you're going to play somebody that someone will think is dangerous. Um, it's just kind of the way it goes. Uh, it's not easy anymore once you get to this point. And, you know, shipping this team out west, I'm honestly not really phased by that at all. I, I think the more important thing probably is that they got a Friday game instead of a Thursday right. game because they just need all the rest that they can get. And Bruce Weber talked quite a bit about that today at his media session. And, I mean, hey, Bruce Weber said road dog mentality. I mean, these guys have been really good on the road. Like, playing away from home does not bother this team. Uh, you know, if this were Kansas having to be shipped out west, I mean, maybe I'd be more worried about it because outside of Allen Fieldhouse, they haven't been very good. It's not the story with this team. So I, that part of it really doesn't bug me much at all. And, I mean, as far as just the matchup, like – I know I was just talking a little bit with uh, KSU underscore fan who had broke down UC Irvine a little bit. They don't shoot a ton of threes, which I like because that's a thing that would typically kind of scare me of an right. underdog team that they have one game where they get really hot. Um, they have a really good two-point percentage defense, which means, I mean, K-State's going to have to play well inside. They do have some bigs there. Um, but fan compared them to like uh, similar to an Oklahoma, like a bigger version of Oklahoma, obviously a team that K-State's handled a couple times. Uh, I think it's a perfectly fine matchup. And and the fact, I mean, look, we all remember the LaSalle game, the 413 thing. That was a playing game winner, which has right. proven over time to be a very big advantage for the team that gets the playing game. So honestly, it's real easy to take the matchup and start as a fan getting worried and anxious and spinning it as a bad matchup for all these reasons. But it's you discount the fact that okay they didn't get anyone in playing game they've been really good on the road they are still a four seed instead of dropping to a five right. like there are actually a lot of things that work to K State's advantage here and they'll probably be a, a thirteen who beats a four in this tournament you know though not for certain it doesn't happen every year but it happens a lot so again and that could be K State so as we're sitting here talking about it being a good matchup we can sincerely believe it while still understanding things can happen in the NCAA tournament we looked at their roster Kurtz and I did and Flanders did before it started. And I think they're interesting because you're right. In general, you'd glance and say, oh, they do have a lot of size. They'll play a couple of 6'8", 6'9", 6'10 guys, usually at the same time on the floor that K-State doesn't typically do if Dean Wade's not playing. But on the perimeter, they don't have a lot of size. We looked at their, you know, their, however you want to turn them, their three guards, their, or their two guards in a wing, whatever. They typically play 6'2", six 6'2", foot, six six foot, I believe, across their, their, you know, their guard positions. So while they'll have more length than K-State, uh, inside, most likely, they won't on the perimeter against guys like Barry Brown, Cartier, Jada, Xavier Sneed, um, you know, those types. They would against Camp Stokes, of course, it would be equal. But I guess what I like seeing is we talk about Camp Stokes, of course, I'll bring him up, but um, we think he's been, at least I do, such a good defender. The only time we see him typically get beat up lately, and even this is rare, is when it's a guy who's just six inches taller and can just shoot over him. But that's not going to be the case in this game. So maybe your worst defender, who's still a pretty good defender, I think now won't be affected by his size, which is his one weakness on that end of the floor. So I like it. And then as you look further, which I think is dangerous to do, we look further. I don't know that Oregon doesn't beat Wisconsin anyway. You know, I mean, and if the, yeah, I think either of those can be a tough matchup, of course, in the second round, but not the end of the world. And I love Virginia as the one seed. Virginia's a great basketball team. You know, they're a great basketball team. Uh, what happened to them last year was a fluke. I don't think it's going to happen again. I think they'll be there in the Sweet 16 if K-State gets there. But I, I, I don't know. I like the type, K-State is a type of team that, we, if you're listening to this, you know the style they play. Virginia will play a style that's similar, just at a higher level. Um, they're maybe the best defensive team in the country, if not one of if not one of them. But another team that's not going to go drop 80 on you and make you just race to catch up to them. It'll be a number of teams that Kansas State, even if they go through their offensive slumps, isn't going to get run out of the gym against. And that's what I like about the draw, at least how it looks on paper. Yeah, as far as Virginia goes, I mean, I would prefer Virginia to Duke and North Carolina, certainly. Gonzaga, maybe more, yeah, of, a, yeah. more of a toss-up. But uh, still, pretty close. I mean, I, I think you're okay as far as that goes. And it is – I mean – I think it was Wyatt Thompson that said this when we were talking to him earlier. He said, I'm only worried about the first two rounds. Everything beyond that's gravy if you yep. get there. Uh, I mean, that's the way I would view it, too. It, like, it's going to be a really tough matchup if you get there, but that's how it should be because it's the Sweet 16. You know, I mean, last year, K-State played Kentucky in the Sweet 16. So it's, it's going to be pretty difficult. And uh, uh, just like last time, freak out – well, not last time, but in 2013 when the scenario was so similar, freak out initially about Wisconsin, and guess what? It didn't end up – really mattering because they they lost that game to Marshall Henderson and Ole Miss Oregon is really hot um there's the Dana Altman storyline there Absolutely. as well so I mean I, I think there are some fun storylines here and I think it's perfectly winnable for K-State I'm just kind of at this place with this team where 
I don't freak out nearly as much as some other people because I've learned over time they typically take care of business and they're typically not as bothered by some of the extenuating circumstances that you would expect to bother a team typically. And we've seen that over and over again with them winning seven of nine on the road, uh, dealing without Dean Wade and losing Cam Stokes for part of the season and all the injury issues, Cartier Jada, they've just been able to handle things. Um, that is what experience does. So I, I think that should help K-State out. And I'm really feeling like things are in a pretty good place. You said a couple of things earlier that I forgot to touch on that I, I, I agreed with. Uh, this morning, we wrote a little, a little deal on the site talking about, I think, just, you know, the who, what, when, and, you know, where type deal and what was most important. Uh, I, and I wrote in there, uh, just one man's opinion, but you shared something similar that I thought the most important thing out of all those was to play on Friday. And as trivial as that seems, it's like the one you think you control the least, right? You play really well to earn a seed or to earn a pod or that kind of deal. And then when you play Thursday or Friday, it's kind of just a coin toss. But I thought that was huge. This is a team that every time we talk about K-State, it's in the re- a lot of people frame the reference of, you know, when healthy, they can make a run. When healthy, they can make a run. One day matters. You know, the way this thing worked out by losing to Iowa State on Friday in the Big 12 tournament, tournament and then getting this game on Friday instead of you know Thursday K-State could have played Saturday in the Big 12 tournament and then played again Thursday and instead they have two more days of rest and that's significant for a team that's dealing with all sorts of things and I'm with you too while as a media person or as a fan watching this it'd be great to have K-State playing in Tulsa or Des Moines for the ease of travel to have more fans in the building I'm not saying it wouldn't be great I don't think K-State cared though because of what you talked about the whole road dog thing they're seven and two on the road in the Big 12 they're seven and two at home you know, they played in a really tough, they lost, but they played in a really tough atmosphere Friday night against a really good Iowa State team and were in there the entire game. So, yeah, going to San Jose, selfishly, again, love to go there for the weather and for our travel plans. I'm sad for the fans who can't make it. And, and again, all things together, you'd rather be playing close to home. But I think the things that, the thing that didn't matter to me is where they play. The thing that did matter is when they play. And those both went K State's way, in my opinion. And I would say this, too, as far as Irvine being a popular upset pick. I've already read a couple people scanning through just some picks and predictions, and I've seen a lot of K-State going out in the second round too, whatever. The thing you have to remember is college basketball these days is such a regionalized sport. You're not paying attention to the national landscape, and you have a lot of people that even if they are following the national landscape of college hoops, they're they're kind of flying in and out on a lot of teams, which is understandable because that's the way the job is. But if you are somebody that is not familiar with K-State – you're going to come in and look and say, well, okay, they had the Big 12 preseason player of the year who's now questionable and has been out a bunch with foot injuries. I'm not sure what he's going to be. They're playing this team that's won 16 straight games. Mm -hmm. If you were just a K-State fan looking at that same scenario with other teams, just slap different names on there, you would think the same thing. You would say, okay, well, in terms of my bracket, I I want to find some upsets. You're inclined to try and find some upsets because it does happen. If you don't pick them, you're kind of of a a wuss. Stick in the mud, you know? (laughs) So that equation is going to lead to a lot of people picking the upset here. That doesn't mean that it's going to happen, and it doesn't – they just, understandably so, outsiders will not have the same opinions and ideas of what K-State's been able to do this year and just the toughness that this team has had and developed over time. So yeah. don't freak out too much about people making it a trendy upset pick. I don't think that matters much at all. Because because of everything you said and also because, as you hinted at, those people, even some of the ones on ESPN, even guys like us, they might know as much about the K State UC Irvine matchup as you do about the Murray State uh, Marquette matchup. You probably know more right. about that because you know about John Morant and K State playing Marquette. I'm just saying, but yeah, they're doing the same thing you are. They're scanning through these 5, 12, 14, 3 games looking for one. And K State, on, on paper, in the most generic sense, makes a ton of sense to pick as your upset team. One, they don't score a lot of points. We have people who cover K-State locally who think that because K-State doesn't score a lot of points means they're not good offensively because no one or some people don't look into, you know, pace, pace and points per possession and the things that actually tell you whether you're whether you're a good offensive team or not. So some will just glance at it and say, man, this team scores in the 60s. You know, oh, well, I don't, I, they're, they aren't going to look and see they're the fourth most efficient offense in the Big 12 or whatever Ken Palm has them now. They're going to say they don't score a lot. Dean Wade could be out. They were kind of a fluke last year anyway because, you know, they didn't play Virginia and they got by Kentucky and they were lucky. There's a lot of lazy things a person can do to look at K-State and pick that as an upset team. And, and I don't even disagree with them. I think K-State's going to win and probably somewhat comfortably. But I would absolutely see how a, a casual observer would look at this as a possible upset pick. I'll even say, too, so I'm, I'm wearing my Stugatz Army shirt right here. Uh, Stu Gotts from the Dan Levitard show with Stu Gotts. 
does a bit, and he did it last year and wound up being right on one of mm-hmm. them with UMBC, where they, they basically say, okay, go Google whatever team, and he'll all the underdogs, all the double-digit right. seeds, and he'll look them up and see, like, okay, they have a really good guard. And, they, and he will literally go and he'll put in this whole thing where, okay, so Murray State, the racers here, they have <laughs> great guard play. It's so experienced in March. Their head coach is moving on to bigger and better things. Because of experienced guard play and da-da-da-da-da, they are going to the Sweet 16. You know, you can do the fly-by-night kind of right. thing with all of that stuff with just a piece or two of information and feel so confident about it. And that's what's going on here with all of these scenarios. And so, of course, it's going to be top of mind. The K State has a guy that is their best player that is injured, and K State's a team that doesn't score much, and they're playing a team that won 30 straight. I could feed those lines to Stu Gotts, and he would give oh, one he'd sound hell great. He sound great. A soliloquy about how Irvine yeah. is going to win and go to the Elite Eight, you know? And it could, and again, we keep, I keep putting this qualifier, it could happen, you know, because it's the tournament anything can. But I think it's a lot of, you know, unfounded, you know, uh, it's natural for a fan base to be concerned when you had the LaSalle thing happen the last time you were four. Uh, it's natural to be concerned. And, and, I, and I'm, not trying to criti- I'm not trying to criticize people for being concerned, you know, but um, I, don't, I don't feel the same way. I want to ask about the process itself. We've spent so much time on your show and on our show and our site and, and everything you do talking about where they'd be seated. And ultimately, it's what, you know, KS200 score fan and us had thought for a long time what we thought it's a four. And I'm curious if, but looking through this, if you've learned anything, um, or anything surprised about where K-State or some of its Big 12 peers got seated in this process? Not really. Uh, the seeding isn't the thing that surprises you with Kansas being a four, K-State being a four, and Tech being a three. I think all of that makes sense. Yeah. Iowa State being a six definitely makes sense. Um, I think what you've said earlier is probably true, that the Big 12 tournament didn't actually matter as much as in the moment we would all think that it did. I mean, the thing that is surprising is – Kansas and Iowa State being in the Midwest region yeah. there because it's so important. I mean, I've seen the narrative from Kansas fans that like they're not good in Sprint Center, but then I saw someone to uh, they're thirty-one and ten in <laughs> Sprint Center yeah. overall. Um, you know that they will have plenty of fans. Iowa State, obviously, those fans are going to do whatever they can to get in there if they were to make it. I, I've just it seems crazy to me that North Carolina as a one seed would have to yeah. potentially deal with that. Um, so that is a surprise, and I think it's, I mean, to me, in my opinion, I don't think that should happen to a four-seed or a six-seed to have that sort of an opportunity. Um, so they did clearly, there were concessions made to the other teams. Okay, K-State, you're a four, not a five, but you're going to have to go play away and not get the advantage of having Kansas City as a possibility. Right. Um, so I, I don't have too much of a problem. A little surprised TCU didn't make it. but I was too. But TCU certainly a team... I'm never going to be the guy that gets overly upset about a Power 5 team getting left out because usually there are so many holes in the resume. I mean, TCU had... Were they 7-11 seven, seven in the Big 12? Right, right. right. Yeah. Don't lose at home to Oklahoma State in the last week of the regular season. Yeah. Like, that's pretty simple. Uh, so I'm not going to really get on a soapbox about that. So all in all, like, I'm okay with it. I think Kansas and Iowa State should feel pretty fortunate uh, but outside of that, I think I'm all right. I think I think they should feel the same, um, and I have, I have similar feelings. The Iowa State one, it doesn't bother me as much, although while I totally agree, you don't reward a team for being a six and playing at home, and I hope that wasn't the case, even though they may have done that. I would say back, if K-State had been a six, you know, uh, not that you want to be, but if K-State had been a six and been, quote-unquote, that bad to be a six, they may have ended up in Kansas City or Tulsa or uh, Des Moines. It well, may, and someone, it, someone just made the point, too. K-State right. was an 11 seed in 2008, and they played in Omaha. Once, so. you, once you get beyond those top three or four seedings, it does become you know a bit of uh, crapshoot or luck. You know, like, right. where do you end up? they got to put you somewhere, and there's a one in four chance you're going to be in Kansas City, and Iowa State happened to end up being there. Kansas, you know, that was probably a little – and maybe Iowa State's on purpose, too. Maybe I'm giving it too much credit saying it's not on purpose because it may have been. Kansas is probably was. I don't agree with it necessarily, but I'm not as upset as some I've seen on Twitter or on the site. I mean, because I think Kansas and K-State are a fascinating comparison. Because I think I saw where KU is probably the number 13 overall seed, K-State number 15, if I, if I read that correctly. And, and it, they're, it's, they're two tough teams to compare because, one, Kansas, if you look at their entire resume – it's actually really strong. I think the number two in the RPI, they play the best schedule in the country. Non-conference wins over Tennessee, and I'm forgetting, but I mean, they had a Michigan State absolutely just won the Big Ten today. Villanova, Villanova. Right. So yeah, they had a they had 
if you look at their entire resume, I and I'm not a Kansas fan, you could argue for them being a little bit higher, maybe even a three seed with what they did over the course of the season. As K-State fans, we naturally want to look at the Big 12 and what happened there and say that's all that matters, but it's not the case. Now, the flip side is Kansas is what? Something like 13-9 and nine since Doak you know, got knocked out for the season. That's more like a fringe bubble team you know, at that point. They haven't been very good without Doak or LeGerald Vick, so I could understand the case of saying, well, you've got to punish them for not having Doak and Vick. Maybe they already did, right? Because if you look at their, their resume, resume again as a whole they probably look more like a three seed right where if you're a k-state fan you don't want to be punished for the dean wade stuff which i don't think k-state was as a four seed that's probably about where they should have been so what i'm trying to say is is i, I don't think fans should be hypocritical and say well kansas should be lower because they don't have doke and they don't have vic but k-state should be where they are because it's not fair to punish for wade i understand it's not a perfect comparison because wade could play where we know doke and vic aren't i know that's why it's not perfect but my point is i think i can at least rationalize a reason behind seeing Kansas getting that slight edge over K-State, even though I think K-State's the better team right now. I think K-State clearly had a better conference season. I would pick K-State on a neutral floor, all those things. I think you can make an argument for why Kansas could be a seed or two higher than K-State in this term. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I don't think anyone should have reasonably expected K-State to be definitively in a better position than Kansas as far as the draw goes. So from that standpoint, I, I think they, they got it right. It's fine. Um I don't know too much about Auburn as far as how that whole thing plays yeah. out for Kansas from a draw standpoint. I did see Jesse Newell, who covers Kansas, saying that Northeastern actually shoots a lot of threes and is a matchup problem for Kansas as far as that is concerned. So, I, I mean, I'm pretty in the dark on that. I'm not going to claim like Stu guys that I know I was a lot say, about Northeastern. Go, go right now and give you us know, your Northeastern right. That's give it. Us your North That's it right pitch. there. Yeah. Kansas can't defend the three and Northeastern. <laughs> I was going to pull boy, it up and do, do some they research. have shooters. Man, and what an up-and-coming coach he is going to be at a blue blood soon. Northeastern <laughs> is on to the Sweet 16. That easy. I don't have an answer even to follow up to that. But I, I wanted to do it too. Where's Northeastern at here? Look at this. They're number 70, 79 in Kim Palm. Just four spots behind UC Irvine. Let's see if they've got some quality of wins, right? You know, about the same chance, 23% chance they give them a beat in Kansas. Is it yeah. like 24 for Irvine? So yeah. kind of the yeah. same thing. A difference, hey, if you're trying to beat, I'm going to go Stu here. Now, the difference between this Northeastern team and UC Irvine is I talked about Irvine hasn't played a team in the top 170 since December. They just beat a top 100 team in Hofstra, you know, by, by yeah. eight in their most recent game. Number 120, Charleston. Number 94, Hofstra. So they have played better competition as of late than UC Irvine has. And you look at this, man. You got a win over Bama. They beat them by 16 earlier Boy. this season. I mean, come on. That's a, that's a they're locked Harvard, in, Alabama. Locked into a win destroyed here. Destroyed Harvard. I don't want to look mean, any of that. Other, there's some other stuff they don't want to look. Yeah, but the point is this. We can make any team sound terrifying in the tournament. And any team should be. Once you get beyond probably the 16s and 15s. And as we learned last year when we were in person for it, yeah. the 16s can do it too. But yeah, I wouldn't forget about this just yet. Um, Kurtz, I think... I think we just have to talk through this, right? We have to talk through how far we think KZ is going to go. We've talked about the draw. We've talked about the seating. We've talked about what's good or not good. I'm glad you brought up uh, Bama's trash. There they are. I mean, but come on. We're doing no, it. We're no, doing no, no, a bit no, no, here. Not for no, these no, purposes. No, 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 no. Yeah. Not I think trash. Colin Sexton played in that game. Still think he came back. He had like an yeah. alumni uh, game. No, no. <laughs> and by that, we mean Colin Sexton, former K-State special teams that's true that's true um, yes. which also yeah um i liked him um but so i think we have to talk through it, what we think is going to actually happen in this tournament i don't know that i'm going to say should we be held accountable for these like or should these be the ones that people say oh my gosh you you guys I said mean. that um we're not gonna be held accountable for these but i'm gonna try to stick to it unless i'm really really torn from it so i don't need a final four yet because i i filled out a bracket like two seconds and i don't want to count that but what do you think is going to happen with K-State? And this can involve over Wild Flanders. I know you're not on camera, but I want you to get in this too. You can go after Kurtz, have some time to formulate your thoughts. What do you see? I'll ask you this way. How far do you think they go? Who do you think they play against? Tell me everything that's going to happen to K-State in the NCAA tournament. I'm straddling the line between round of 32 and Sweet 16. Um, I, I do think they'll get past the first game. I, I think here's the thing. I in most scenarios, if I didn't know much about the guts of the team, the details of the team with K-State and the fact that they have an injury to Wade, the fact that I don't expect too much from Wade necessarily in the tournament, it, it feels to me like a team that would be at a disadvantage to get to the second weekend. But I do think that there's something about this K-State team and the way that they've played. And they did prove to me in two games in Kansas City that they can they're capable of playing at a – high enough level to get to the Sweet 16 um, in both of those games against Iowa State and, and then TCU. So 
the optimist in me at this point because I have doubted this team a lot when they have turned things on their face. I'll say that they get to the Sweet 16 and then lose to Virginia uh, right now. But like I said, I teetered. Like I was asked on a radio show in Kansas City before the Big 12 tournament. I had pretty much the same thoughts, but I said, well, I, I haven't seen what this team is going to look like without Wade. So I'll go around to 32. I think they proved enough to me in Kansas City to at least move me yeah. to that Sweet 16 line now, but it's very close. Flando, what do you got? Can you, you got anything different than Kurt? Same yeah. thoughts? Share us. Share us Well, here. Oh, yeah, I want to go a step further. I think K-State gets to the Elite Eight. Uh, I think, again, so like two years in a row, an Elite Eight appearance for the Cats. But they can't go Final Four? Beating the I, one seed? I, that's that, <laughs> no, we haven't. I'm just giving I, you a hard I, time. I know, and that's, yeah. that's the thing. We, I'm we, good I, for now. I'm, I think I'm good for now, too, but I might need one in a few. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, no, I think... Um, I think there's a lot on that other end of the bracket once they would get to the Elite Eight that I think could topple them. There's that sure. two-seed Tennessee. And also, I mean, this uh, six-seed Villanova. I mean, this is a two-time defending champion team that obviously has done some really good things in the tournament, have experience. I mean, yeah, they're not the same teams that won those tournament, or won the tournaments, but I think that one of those teams could get K-State to uh, fall in the Elite Eight. And, and yeah, no, no, uh, no Final Four appearance two years in a row but two late lead eights in a row i mean that'd be, that'd be great but you're saying you and i are also going to sit there for the second year in a row watching confetti hit the other team other yep. than k-state uh, <laughs> that all right i mean that would be sting. interesting you know <laughs> I, I mean i'm going to side a little more with kurtz so i will say on the bracket i felt on espn in about eight seconds i did put k-state in the elite eight um that was out of you know probably some fandom more than anything yeah. But I, I would echo very similar to Kurtz. I do think Sweet 16, uh, somebody asked if Flano's wearing leather. I don't think that's a leather that's jacket. That's not leather, unfortunately. Not that bougie. But, I uh, wish. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think Sweet 16. And here's why I like K-State. And this is my Stu Gutz thing, too. Because you could pick, again, any narrative depending about any to make them sound good in this time of year. But I do mean this sincerely. I like that K-State does not depend on making a lot of jump shots to beat you like Iowa State does. K-State needs to take make shots to play well. I'm not saying that, but they can beat you 59 to 55 or 61 to 50 like they did Kentucky last year. So I like that. I like that they're based on experience, defense, and grit because those are things that are going to be there in the tournament. They don't have to hope those show up. They will show up. So I like that about them. Um, and, I, and, I, and I think it's just a situation where they're going to have, I think, more to play for in their minds than the teams they play against. Even Wisconsin and Oregon, who desperately are going to want to go to the Sweet 16, of course. And to them, it'll be, it'll be all or nothing. This K-State team knows what it did last year. It knows in the back of its mind if it falls short of that, it will be seen as a step back. Um, I don't think fans will, will take it out on K-State if they go to the Sweet 16 and lose to Virginia. I'd be surprised if they do. Um, so I don't think they have to get to the Elite Eight to be seen as successful. And I don't think they have to get to the Sweet 16 to be a successful season. I think if, if they happen to just win one game and lose, that'd be too bad. and it'd be, it'd be around earlier than it should be, but it'd still be a great season. Uh, I think Sweet 16, I think they beat UC Irvine and then Dana Altman in Oregon in round two. I do think they fall to Virginia in round three and what I think will be a fantastic game. Uh, probably some similarities to Iowa State where it's, you know, high 50s, low 60s, a lot of real physical, exciting plays, and then who can make some shots down the stretch. But we'll get to that. We'll be Well, we'll I, be I tell there, you what, you know? I'm going to add this. It's add really something. dangerous to project that far down the road to play Virginia. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But I felt I, I was terrified of Virginia as the potential one in K-State's bracket for a while. The fact that Florida State just got them in the ACC tournament, right. um, that makes me feel a lot better because uh, what did Florida State wind up as a three? What did they – I mean, they're – At best, they're, they're a three, They're a right? very similar team to K-State. Right. I watched Florida State and Duke last night. So, yeah, I would agree that they're similar teams. Yeah. So, I – that gives me they're more They're a four hope. seed. They're okay, a four. they're a four. Yeah. So, there you go. If K-State were to get to that point that Virginia is more – uh, I was going to say that they are more invincible. I don't think that that's. A, I think invincible. I don't exactly know that that's a thing. If you're but, in, uh, if you're invincible, you have to be invincible. <laughs> right. Let's say they are more invincible than we thought. Uh, yeah, they just, they just dropped a ten. I mean, yeah, they're a great team, but they just dropped a ten point loss, like you said, to Florida State, a four seed. You know, like K State again, very very good basketball team. And yeah, if K State plays Virginia, it's going to be an extremely big challenge. But. It's not one of these, you know, college basketball doesn't, doesn't have a lot of these teams anymore, you know, that you just like, you can't beat them. You know, Duke would be pretty tough, of course. Um, Virginia will be too. Virginia was better than Duke in the ACC this year, so I understand all that. But we'll get to that more when we come to it. Um, Cats would beat Duke. Zion wears Dean Wade pajamas. I heard that's, that's true. That's great. Um, Zion wears Dean Wade pajamas. Oh, terrified. That's I will, so I, right. I, I will wrap with a Dean Wade note, and you can say what you say about it. 
different or the same is <laughs> um well i'm not trying to put you on the spot saying you have to as well <laughs> is what i'm trying to get to uh i don't expect dean wade to play and i haven't for a while but the longer you know there's no announcement that says he's not gonna there's no i'll say i'll just come out and say it. there's no reason anymore to if he's out to say he's not gonna play i guess there is you know if you're trying to make other teams prepare for dean wade and that kind of stuff so maybe there is but the longer you don't hear the word surgery or out for dean wade the greater the chances increases that perhaps he could be somebody at some point available in this tournament i would say this i actually i lean towards they will try to run him out there a little bit but i i think i mean i hate to say it i think it'll be very 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 similar to last year whether it's game one or game two i think they will try yeah and i think he will go out there for a little while and just won't be able to be real effective and um at best is like a decoy dean right um like they used against tcu in the tournament last year maybe or right yeah. right that kind of a thing um so i'm not expecting much of a contribution from him i would lean more to i'd say like 70 30 i think he'll actually run out there and play yeah. a little bit um but won't be very effective and, and for what it's worth bruce weber did say today dean way's getting reevaluated by doctors tomorrow um, so I guess by the time we have that first press conference, which will be yeah. Thursday, yeah. Um, we might be able to uh, get something more concrete and definitive on Wade. Um, I did glance up and see a question, so I'll, I'll ask this to you guys both, and then we'll wrap it up this edition of the KSO I, Show. I've got a bunch of questions if you want oh, to go let's through some through questions. Some, you, yeah, you, okay. you read, I'm going to request credentials for me in Flando while you read off questions, and I'm okay. going to answer them. Okay, here we go. So Scott Wildcat, Vegas has had a full three-point drop from eight, and some books have even pulled the line or – part of uh, any part of you shocked at the wins of betting I, I would pretty much just go back to what i said about um people picking it as an upset you know vegas betters people that and that almost even more so because vegas is going to move the line based on john q public right right like what what and i guess you could say sharp money will move the line too, whatever but i think your average person out there who has not watched college basketball much all year is going to look and say well these people are telling me that k-state has a key injury and Irvine's won 30 games as a mid-major, boom, there's my Absolutely. upset pick right there. That is, I mean, that's the type of game I would pick in my bracket if I were filling out a bracket. So I think that's, I think that's what it is. I would not say that that concerns me a ton. I, I would also think Vegas is keen enough to know that Dean Wade is probably not going to play, um, or that it's, I guess I did say that I think he's 70-30, but they know the situation well right. with Dean Wade. Um, so that'd be my answer. I, do you have anything else to add? Uh, real similar thoughts. I think it's just simple. If if there's a lot of people, like you said, looking at their brackets and going on and making some bets right now, and they say, oh, I'm, I'm picking this 14-3, you know, or I'm thinking about it, and then I see it's an eight-point line, well, heck yeah, give me that team. And again, if you're a smart gambler, you know, um, I think K-State will probably be covering a spread if it's five, six points, that kind of deal. But again, you're going to look at simple things like, do they score a lot of points? They don't. So now, if your team doesn't score a lot, K-State can control a game and win at 65-60. You know what I mean? And, and that sounds weird, but like that could happen. So I could I could get behind betting on on Irvine as an eight or nine point underdog to open that lineup. So it doesn't concern me or surprise me, although it's a very reasonable, of course, question. This is from uh, my man Rob, Fast Talking Rob. He says, what's the best spot to grab a brew in San Jose? And if you don't know how long until you look into it, uh, I'll probably look into it pretty soon. Honestly, I was going to look for things to do there yeah. um, because we will have. And I, now there will be stuff going on on the first day. And then if K-State wins another off day. But I tried really hard. I put together a nice little travel itinerary for myself in Atlanta last yeah. year. I did not go to the first two rounds because of baseball, but um i was in atlanta so i tried really hard I, i'm big on like if i'm if i'm somewhere i want to do at least one kind of touristy thing or something that i can't do anywhere else so I, I will definitely be all about trying to find that i got an email from a nice member asking if we would have a drink with him there because he oh. lives out there so we absolutely okay. will do that but besides that i don't know of anything i don't know of anything yet flanders do you want to go to this uh yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm just checking before. Uh, yes, please sign me up. Sign it put up. This in. Here's one yeah. from Robert. What's going on with Barry? Why isn't he driving to the paint as much? Do you think he's going to find his mid range shot again? Uh, you know, I think with Barry, it's a lot of what Bruce Weber said after the game. The two guys that need rest the most right now are Barry and X because they just have eh, they're just banged up. Um, obviously, it's it's playable, but I, I think that's what's held Barry back. He has not been as explosive. Um, and he was talking today about he did he took a day off yep. um, after the Big 12 tournament, which is a rarity for him. He's a guy that they have to keep out of the gym, basically. 
So I think he, I and I would expect like I know that they say X will be helped out a lot by it too. I think the guy that would look the most different in terms of positively better in that game on uh, Friday when they finally play it, I'd pick Barry as that guy. So I, I think this rest and the fact that it's a Friday game and they went out a day early in the Big 12 tournament, uh, to me, that leads me to say, I think you'll see a better version of Barry Brown. I do too. You're never going to get Barry Brown, Bruce Weber, Chris Lowry, anybody to sit down and say, Barry Brown's injury is X and he will need Y to recover it. And that's what's going on. You're never going to get that answer because um, nothing good comes from it, at least from a Kansas State trying to win games perspective. He's not 100% healthy. Bruce Weber even said today that, you know, Barry will tell us in pressers, I'm fine, I'm fine, everything is fine. But he tells his coaches and his team that he's not. Because as, as Bruce said today, Barry says, this hurts, that hurts, this is bad. So the guy's beat up. There's, that discussion doesn't need to, just to take place because we know it's the case. What it is, we don't know. Um, I, it's obviously not serious enough to prevent him from playing 39 to 40 minutes. It seems like every right. single night. But you're right. It's limiting his explosiveness. It's limiting his ability to get to the basket. I believe from, you know, the little bit I hear that rest will help with it. I think him taking a day off was good. And again, they get basically a week off before they have to play a game. Um, I think you should have hope that whatever you get from Barry Brown is going to be the best he can give you because he's going to know he's had a week of rest. He's never going to feel healthier. He's never going to get to play at K-State again. He will do everything he can. I don't know what that's going to be, but I'd, I'd expect it's more than we've seen from him the last month or so. Mike McGurl had this great answer to a question that I asked after the Iowa State game where I said, how much is this rest needed for you guys? And he said, well, I mean, look, like I'm beat up. We're all beat up. Um, we could all really use some rest, but this is why you play college basketball to be playing games at this time. So who cares? Like, I think Barry Brown very much embodies that whole attitude. So Andre asked, what will be the fan percentage for each team? Will uh, Irvine have the majority? I mean, I don't know. I I don't think Irvine has like a huge fan base. Yeah. I would say it's not going to be a significant majority would be my guess on that. Um, I don't know if you have any other thoughts, but I mean, yeah, it's going to be like you said. I mean, they're going to be the underdog and they're from California. So people who just randomly go to that game sure. will probably cheer for them. But also it's going to be on a Friday afternoon at one o'clock. Um, the casuals probably in San Jose, California, who aren't diehard sports fans, probably aren't going to go to that game and just cheer for, you know, random California team. Um, I don't imagine in the first round at one o'clock on a Friday in San Jose, there will be a noticeable atmosphere advantage for either yes. team between um, UC Irvine or K-State. If anything, yeah, I bet it's more Irvine than K-State because the casuals will cheer for Irvine. The fans of other schools who don't want to play the four seed will cheer for Irvine, but not enough that I think it's going to be something that impacts the game either way. So Chris asks, do you know the way to San Jose? Is that like a song? Yeah. Okay. Do you? Okay. Thank you, Nats. I, I didn't know. I, I, like, I know I've heard that before, but I didn't know... Flando, will you look that up? Like, who who sings Do You Know the Way it's to San female. Jose? Is it? I think so. Do you know, Nas, who sings it? Hey, oh, fun okay. note while I'm at it. Um, this is not really have to do with anything, but it's fascinating. I asked Gabe Diarman. You know Gabe Diarman, right? Power Mizzou, Mizzou yeah. rival oh, yeah. site. Yeah. He made a note on his Twitter the other day about, oh, Auburn and Iowa State are the same, you know, the same basketball team or whatever. And I said, hey, man, oh. that makes me want to know. Like, can you go through the league and tell me what, you know, because Missouri was in the Big 12, of course, and now in the SEC, and he's covered them both times. Like, can you go through the league and tell me what school equals what team, you know? And he, I haven't read this yet, so if it's offensive, I'm sorry. He says, Kansas State, Arkansas. Both have been good to great in both sports at various times. Neither has sustained it. Neither has necessarily sustained it recently. If you ask most people, these wouldn't be listed as two of the better programs in the league. They're both probably overlooked quite a bit. K-State has the scariest mascot in all of college, <laughs> all of college sports. Arkansas counters with the creepiest cheer, the Woo Pig Woo Suey. So, I mean, yeah. I got no hate for that. Good. K-State That's Arkansas, very well done by Gabe DeArmond. Um, yeah, his West Virginia-Mizzou comparison is pretty good, too. Yeah, I mean, the rest of them he's got... I mean, I'll just run what we're about. Oklahoma-Georgia off the top of my head that seems good. KU-Kentucky seems very obvious. Um, Texas Tech, South Carolina, Iowa State, Vandy, West Virginia, Mizzou, TCU, and Baylor equals Ole Miss, Mississippi State. Oh, Tennessee, Nebraska. Tennessee, Nebraska is great. great. Um, he just did a great job. Like I think these were, were pretty amazing um, and pretty cool to see. It's cut off a little bit. I bet he has Texas, Florida. I bet you that's who it is at the top because that would make sense too. Gabe's a smart dude. Yeah, Marie, or Texas, Bama. So. Marie Dion uh, Warwick. Oh, okay. Yeah, Diane someone did say. Yeah. I think it's Diane Warwick <laughs> is, the, is the name then. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know the way to San Jose? Okay. We don't. We're going to fly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's <laughs> so, Southwest yeah. Airlines is going to yeah. help me out with that. Yeah. Um, Neil wants to know, or he says, I think Mac is the key to getting out of San Jose and advancing. Would you agree? Well, I think in that first matchup, like Mac's going to have to be pretty good because it sounds like UC Irvine has good yeah. bigs. Um, so I think Mac does become pretty key there. Um, 
I don't know if it translates uh, like Sprint Center where he's just playing in a neutral floor, if that will help bring some of that magic that he has. You would think so. I mean, he was pretty good. He was pretty good. I uh, thought so. I I thought in Kansas City. So, yeah, I can definitely understand the point. I I don't know that I would list him like number one. He is the key. But, I mean, he's up there. He's a guy that's going to have to play well. Um, The dogs are running all over the cords. It's fun. Uh, It's one of those things where, like, and I don't mean to be a jerk about this, but it's a battle of semantics, right? Is he the key? I don't know. That might be a little bit strong. But I'm as big of a Mac lover as anybody. I thought he played really well the two games, and I think he'll be a major factor. The thing is, K-State's only going to play, you know, seven, eight, maybe nine guys, depending if Dean's able to play a lot of minutes. It may be as few as six or seven. So everyone's going to be a huge key. Like, I could sit here, and I'm not criticizing the question because it makes sense, but I could sit here and say Cam's the key or Barry's the key. When you're not playing a ton of guys, they all are. But Mac will be incredibly important. And he may be the one guy, though, that, you know – has the most ability to play above his head because we've seen the Mac, like you say, who gets 30 against KU or plays really well in the Big 12 tournament where you kind of feel like you're, you kind of know what you're going to get from Cam and Barry and even Cardi right now and probably even X to some extent. Mac may give you 5-3, and three, you know, or he might give you 13-8 and eight in elite defense and is the best player on the floor. So from that perspective, I could... Um, I could see it. We just got a note on your Twitter that says Cam was the best player versus Cal Irvine last yeah, year. Yeah, he led the team in scoring. Which is absolutely true, and it stands to reason he'll be the best player again. So Cam Stokes, uh, pick to click. Yeah, yeah, pick to click. Cam Stokes, yeah. yes, love and it. I, and I did criti- love it, and I did criticize your question. I apologize. Uh, any that. any chance of the Lavenders in the tourney? No, I don't think so. No, um, Matt, it's I'm glad it's a Friday game, but the 1 p.m. tip seems like it could be a slight yeah. advantage for the Anteaters. I'm not. I was trying to figure out what the uh, the angle is there necessarily. Well, it means local time, probably. Okay, that's what I was thinking okay. because I mean I'm assuming this, but you know they're used to the California one at 1 p.m. Which Nats? What time is that in Kansas? 11? No, oh, three? <laughs> I don't know. So it's a 1 p.m. Oh, so that's actually good. So, so is it a it 1 p.m. Would... local tip, which would mean that it's <sighs> like 11 a.m. on? I bet it's 1 p.m. here, which would make what 11 there? 11 a.m. there. So, uh, okay, I, I get you, Matt. I got you. Um, yeah, I mean, that could be, but there are... I'm trying but better to think that they... way, But better that way than the other, right? Am I, thinking, am I thinking this the right way? Because at 11 o'clock, I like that we're breaking this down, there, K-State would feel like it's 1 o'clock here. So while it'll be in the morning there, it would feel like a more normal start yeah, time. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think it's a great, it's an advantage. But, you know, I mean, you're either a later game because, you know, less rest and that kind of stuff. But what did Bruce say? They're going to get there Tuesday. Well, see, that's the other thing. So, Bruce has been yeah. really big this year on getting there early, genius. like arriving at destinations a little earlier early. than they normally have. Yeah. yeah. To just get used to being there and more in a routine. Uh, so trust me, they're well aware of what time that they're playing and they're going to plan accordingly. I mean, right. I, I wouldn't be like, they'll probably get there Tuesday. Yep. Yeah. They'll get there Tuesday. But again, if now, if they played, if they played Tuesday, I could say, yeah, you playing early in the morning, losing all this travel. I could absolutely, absolutely agree. But yeah, get playing Friday, getting there Tuesday by that point. Shouldn't be, shouldn't be a, an excessively big factor. Let me see. I got one last Menchie here. Oh, no. Just, Nats, what do you think about Menchies? One o'clock. No, she shook her head, too. I also shook my head. So. I can't say Menchies. Can we tell them we're all staying together in San Jose? Can we tell them that? I just did. So we're all going to stay together in San Jose. Flanders, myself, uh, Kurtz. We've got an Airbnb. If you live out there, get in those Menchies. Let us know yeah, where you're yeah, at. Tell us where you are. Give us a Menchie. We'll hit you up. <laughs> if you're a media person listening to this and you want to come sleep on a couch, Flanders is going to be there, but he'll share. We'll be happy to have you. Absolutely. Um, we're just going to have a great time. We're going to get there Wednesday. Is that where we said we're going? We're going Wednesday? Yeah, flying out Wednesday. So we'll be there Wednesday, relatively early for us. I think even early afternoon for you. We don't know the schedule yet. We assume we'll have a media availability, probably an open practice on Thursdays, how it was last year. So we'll be excited to bring that. There'll be a team there that Flanders makes fun of an open practice like he did last year. It happened to be UMBC. And they'll probably oh, do whoops. something They'll probably do something special. Uh, so we'll keep you updated <laughs> for that. What are you making fun of them for? Well, to Flanders' credit, I'll defend you for a second. <laughs> they were the the only team that didn't have a band or cheerleaders there oh. and they also um so everybody else k-state comes out to practice or anybody else and they play the fight song and the cheerleaders celebrate <laughs> it's kind of corny but at least whatever umbc doesn't have that so they come out they play their fight song over the pa yep. you know they've got they've got practice uniforms that look like they got them at kmart yep. Um, and I mean, and you throw in the combination. <laughs> no disrespect. I love the lo- I love the logo. Love the the, the little the dog. Mascot, you know, yeah, a little retriever yeah. is the mascot. Yeah, the retriever. And not gold. And 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 
I respect this dude too, but the Mora guy. Oh yeah, you first, see him the first time. Yeah, and you're like, he's, he's five so, three, yeah. you know. <laughs> but he ends up being an amazing key part to their win over Virginia. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> was, yeah. Uh, any chance of some live shows from Cali? Yeah, probably. Yeah, I would say probably. absolutely yeah. so. I mean, I'd be shocked. I saw a preview from before that just asked a similar question: Will we have any more official predictions and podcasts and live shows? Absolutely. I think tonight. I don't want to speak for Kurtz, but credit to him we just wanted to do something you know we had a big mm-hmm. announcement and it's something we've been talking about for weeks now but i feel like yeah we'll have um a more well he'll do his show i'm sure and stuff from well yeah okay. tomorrow so, yeah i'll have a show from four to six yeah the game um, kman on uh, apple podcast google podcast or uh, myspace i believe you go to myspace <laughs> yeah. page and check zanga. it out i've got so, a zanga we're gonna have tons more stuff but thank you for asking that but this won't be it um we'll go ahead and stop it now Really cool to see. We got to do yours more often because you get more hearts in the corner of your screen and more numbers than I do. Yeah, I si- sincerely, thank you to all of you that watch this. So that's great. Also appreciate those of you listening on the KSO show. Um, I don't think I've mentioned our sponsor yet because I'm really good at that again, but it is. Minchie. <laughs> Minchie, our sponsor. Uh, get a Minchie in there for <laughs> Bourbon and Baker, for Harry's, and, of course, the one we all talk about all the time, Tallgrass Taff House. Um, appreciate them. We'll be back with them all season for football, too, because Naps took care of that. We're going to wrap it up. For Flanders, Kurtz, Nats, the dogs, tell your friends. Tell them. <laughs>